Betaflight 4.5 is just around the corner. It's currently in release candidate. And a little while ago, I put out a video going through the new exciting features that Betaflight 4.5 is gonna bring to us. And now it's time for me to start testing those features. But before I can do that, I've gotta upgrade one of my quads to Betaflight 4.5. And I've decided that the one I'm gonna do it on is this one, the iFlight Chimera 7 Pro V3, I don't know, the iFlight Chimera 7 that I reviewed a while back. And the reason is that, well, you know, it's just a good quadcopter, but the real reason is that it's got a GPS on it. And one of the features that Betaflight 4.5 has added is much better support for GPSs and GPS rescue. So come along with me as I upgrade this thing from Betaflight 4.5 three or four, 4.3, I think, to Betaflight 4.5 release candidate. How hard could it be? Just flash it and copy the config over, right? <laughs> no. I'm Joshua Bardwell. And you're going to learn something today. I think I'm lower in the frame than I usually am. Feels like my, there we go. Okay. <clears throat> If you're gonna flash Betaflight 4.5, the first thing you need to know is that you must download and install Configurator 10.10. .10. The Configurator has a separate version number from the actual firmware that goes on the flight controller, and the new flight controller firmware has to be supported by the new Configurator. Con con configurator. Configurator. So I'm currently on Betaflight Configurator 10.10.0, release candidate two. And I guess as long as I'm doing it, I should look and see if there's a new one. And at this time, no, there isn't. Candidate release candidate two is still the latest one. Uh, at the time that you are watching this, it may be fully released and you may just have 10, 10, zero release and not need to do anything special, but you definitely still need to make sure you are on 10, 10, zero or newer before you proceed. The next thing we're gonna do is back up our configuration. Always back up your configuration, but especially when you're flashing a new firmware version, because here's the thing, this may all go completely off the rails. It might not work for some reason, and you need the ability to hit the rewind button and go back to a, your nice working quadcopter if that happens, and there, there is no rewind button, there's no undo. You have to manually back up the configuration so you can restore it later. Here's how we're gonna do that. Uh, we're gonna connect to the flight controller and go to the presets tab. And then we're just gonna hit save backup. And here's our backup and I'll just, uh, yeah, that's fine. Beta flight CLI backup, yada, yada, yada. And then what I like to do is just open up that file and double check what all is in it. I've had rare cases where like it didn't load the config and the file was empty. So I'll just double check that. Yeah, it looks like there's a CLI dump in there. We are now good to proceed. Next, I'm gonna hit update firmware, and I'm gonna enable show release candidates. If you're doing this at some point in the future, when Betaflight 4.5 is released, you don't need to show release candidates, you'll just flash it from the list. Uh, we're gonna change here to release and release candidates, and we'll hit auto detect to try to detect the target. It has detected the iFlight Blitz F722 target on my flight controller, which is the correct one, and then Betaflight 4.5.0. We do need to just glance at these options down here. These options are part of the new Betaflight, actually it's new as of 4.4, the Betaflight cloud build functionality. And uh, basically what it means is that some parts of Betaflight aren't going to be included. For example, if you were using SBUS as your receiver protocol, that just wouldn't be in Betaflight. It wouldn't work at all unless you change this option. For more about the cloud build functionality, I made a separate video about that back when Betaflight 4.4 came out, and I'll put a link in the video description below. We're using ExpressLRS, uh, and so the Crossfire radio protocol is correct. Motor protocol will be DSHOT, that is correct, and we're gonna leave all these other options as they were. Actually, get rid of Acro Trainer. I don't care about Acro Trainer. I think we're good. So then we will load firmware online. Why did he get rid of Acro Trainer mode? What's wrong with Acro Trainer mode? Nothing's wrong with it. Just don't use it. You want to know what Acro Trainer mode? You don't know what Acro Trainer mode is, do you? Link in the video description below to my video about Acro Trainer mode. It's not, it's for line of sight flying. Who does that? Why do I have an attitude? <laughs> like flash firmware. 
Uh, oh, oh, it's reminding me to create a backup. That's cute. I already created a backup, so I will ignore the risk. I forget. That's nice that they've added that. Why do I have an attitude about that? Like amazing pilots fly line of sight. <laughs> like uh, Quad Mover, for example, comes to mind. Min Chan Kim flies line of sight. They do crazy things. Or why do I have an attitude? I'm in a mood today. <laughs> now, after it says programming successful, the next thing you might be tempted to do is connect. Oh, we're going to get this warning. Beta flight 450. Why didn't ask me to apply custom defaults? Does it do that automatically now? Oh, the apply custom defaults is gone. Cute. Okay, fine. The next thing you might be tempted to do is go to the presets tab and load that backup back in. Do not do that. You cannot load a backup directly between Betaflight 4.4 and Betaflight 4.5 or between any major Betaflight version, 4.3, 4.4, 4.5. You can't just load the config in. It doesn't work like that. But I'm going to try and make our life easier by showing you specific parts of the configuration that I'm pretty sure we can safely pull in. But the first thing I need to do is put my quadcopter flat on the desk and go to the settings and calibrate the accelerometer. We got a warning about that when I first uh, when I first powered up. The accelerometer calibration is easy to do, and you should just do it each time you flash the flight controller. Next, I'm going to go into my configuration here. And let's see if we can just put Betaflight on the other side and go to the CLI tab. And I'm just going to start going down through this configuration, looking for parts of it that I know and now you will know are safe to pull in. And the first thing we got is all these timers, DMA channels, and sometimes resource assignments, pin resource assignments. These, I think, we just leave alone because I like if we look and we look at timer here, I think we're going to see that it's the same. I need to restore these. I'm suspicious that I don't. Okay. It looks like it made a change. Timer AOO used to be none, and now it's AF2. I don't know what that is, but it's changing some things. And these presumably are changes from the default. Okay, I've changed, I've changed my mind. I'm going to put these things in. I don't know what they are. I mean, I kind of vaguely know what they are. I don't know why these specific changes need to be made, but let's go ahead and change them. And again, if any of this screws up, thank God we saved our config. We can just go back to Betaflight 4.4. We can load this configuration and everything will be right back how it was. The features are definitely safe to pull in. We will copy and paste that. This is just enabling things like GPS, the LEDs and so forth. The serial lines, this is your ports tab. That is safe to pull in. I'm going to copy and paste it. There are very rare cases where the ports tab changes in such a way that the serial lines don't import directly. For example, between Betaflight 4.3 and 4.4, the way that you set up um, a, a digital video transmitter changed. There was a new entry in the ports tab when you're using a digital video transmitter. And so your 4.3 ports config wasn't the same between 4.3 and 4.4. That's not the case. We can safely pull those in. The beacon lines. This is your motor D-shot beacon where your motors beep instead of the buzzer that doesn't exist. Those are safe to paste in. The LED lines and the color lines, these control what the LEDs on the quadcopter do. Like with a, on, in this case on the iFlight, there are LEDs on the side panels that show the battery status. Those are safe to pull in. The aux lines are your aux modes. That's almost always safe to pull in. And now we come to the master, and this is where things get a little bit sketchier. Generally, I want to be pretty conservative about what I pull in from the master section because this relates to sort of core functionality that is more likely to have changed between Betaflight 4.4 and 4.5. And the idea here is that if the devs have changed how this works, then we want to leave 4.5 defaults as they were. We can't assume that the, the 4.4 values will work the same. Maybe they will, but and since I'm not sure, I'm going to leave it alone. But there are specific parts of this I'm pretty confident I can pull over, like min check and max check. That is, relates to your channel endpoints. And uh, those are going to stay the same. This RC smoothing, that relates to your RC link. So like express alerts, et cetera. I'm going to leave those alone and I'm going to manually set those up later. A D-shot idle value is your idle speed and D-shot bidirectional. Uh, we are not going to set D-shot bidirectional on in the CLI because when you do it from the GUI, it also tweaks some of the filters. So we're going to leave that line out. 
And I'm gonna mentally remember this D shot idle value. I guess that can get pasted in. That's probably gonna carry forward. A motor PWM protocol, D shot 600, we can do that. Fail safe delay and fail safe procedure. That's setting up our fail safe and activating GPS rescue as our fail safe. That's fine. We can do that. Yaw motors reversed. That's setting the motors to be props out. And we definitely want to preserve that because otherwise the motors will be spinning the wrong direction. Small angle equals 180. That lets the quadcopter arm when it's not flat and level. And we will, I always do that. Here we come to some GPS options. And I'm gonna leave these alone because I know Betaflight 4.5 has made some changes to the way that GPS works. I might make a mental note that like, the SBAS mode is auto, Galileo is on, and MinSats is five. I might make a mental note to check those options later when I get to the GUI, but I'm not gonna copy them in from the CLI because they might be like different or behaving differently. And I don't know, I'm just gonna be conservative there. I don't think we need dead band on the yaw stick. My gimbals are in pretty good shape. Gyro filters, we're gonna leave those alone. Gyro filters are the kind of thing that Betaflight 4.5 might be doing differently. Set report cell voltage. Uh, this is an option that I always turn on you may not even know it exists. What this does is it causes the telemetry sent to the controller to report the cell voltage, the average cell voltage instead of the pack voltage. So you'll get 4.2 instead of 25.6 on a 6S. I like to see the average cell voltage. Obviously in the OSD, you can see both of them, but for the telemetry back to the, the hand controller, you can only get one, and I like this one. As far as the OSD options go, I always copy all the OSD options in and actually I have a standard OSD uh, CLI dump that I paste in. We're gonna go ahead and paste all of this stuff in so that hopefully the OSD will be preserved exactly how it should be. And VCD video system equals HD, that definitely needs to come over. And RPM filter min hertz, no. Don't touch the filters, don't touch the PIDs. That stuff is a little bit more, we may need to leave it alone. Now we come here to the PID profile. And this is a tricky one because like, According to the release notes for 4.5, the PID loop hasn't really changed and you should be able to copy your PIDs over. But in general, I'm very hesitant to just clone PIDs between a version of Betaflight and a new version of Betaflight. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna type profile zero and that puts me in PID profile zero and I'm gonna copy this stuff in. And then I'm gonna type profile one and that puts me in PID profile one, which is still at the default, and we're gonna leave that alone. And later, if I want to play with these PIDs, I can go back to PID profile zero and try them out. They'll be there for me, but my first test flight is just gonna be on the default PIDs, which are conservative and are hopefully not gonna get me in trouble. As far as the rate profile though goes though, it is almost always safe, almost always safe to copy your rate profile in, especially because I can see here, the only things I'm changing are the our rates, the expo, and so forth, except for one thing. Ah, here's my rate profile, yeah. Rate profile zero, I think, is the default iFlight rates. Rate profile one is the one that I use because I can tell it's, I just recognize these rates as my rates. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy that and paste that. Great, rate profile one, beta flight rates, my rates. And that is it. We are almost done. I'm gonna type the word save. And then there are a few more steps I'm gonna do, but we've got most of our configuration copied over. So let's just check here, uh, PID tuning. We are on profile two. Ooh, we're not in expert mode. Always wanna be in expert mode. Always be in expert mode. Disconnect, options, and just remember the setting. Yeah, just remember, okay, so permanently enable expert mode is gone. It just remembers the setting, yay. So uh, profile two, uh, we're on default PIDs. Rate profile is my 533 rates, except it's not my 533 rates. Rate profile name, JB 533 rates. Oh, that's it, huh? Filter settings all at defaults. So that's probably what we want. We're gonna go to the motors tab and we're gonna enable bi-directional D-shot and it's gonna make these changes. That's why I didn't make this change in the CLI. And we, I also remember the motor idle was 800 and that is actually what it is, 8%, props out, good. I'm gonna check the motor direction, not the motor direction rather, but I'm gonna check the motor order just because theoretically that could be something that got changed when I flash the new version. 
So I'm just going to hit reorder motors real quick and double check that the right motor spins. Yes. The motor direction should still be the same because that's an ESC setting, not a flight controller setting. So that shouldn't have changed. Although if I was paranoid, I would also run the motor direction wizard and make sure the motors were spinning the direction the flight controller expected. But I feel pretty safe about that. OSD, why are we not in high definition? Why is my OSD effed up? This is, it says high definition, but the canvas here, do you see that this is the standard definition canvas? And, oh, oh, there we go. I don't know why I had to do that, but now my OSD is all effed up. Just save that real quick and we'll go back to the CLI. I think the reason for that is that the air unit needs to be powered up at the time that you make this change. Let's copy and paste this all one more time. There we go. Now it's as it should be. Great, it's probably good to double check the board direction. Forward, right, left. Okay. Uh, sometimes when you flash a new firmware version, the board alignment will not be correct. And it's good to double check that. GPS. Is my GPS working? GPS is red, which means that we are talking to the GPS. We just don't have a GPS fix. And that's because I'm indoors. That's fine. I definitely want ground assistance. And I definitely want to use Galileo. Why wouldn't I use Galileo, right? Oh, in presets, we need to load the RC link. RC link preset for Express LRS. And I don't think I'm gonna be flying 50 Hertz on a long range bird. So we'll do the Express LRS 50 Hertz with cinematic pre-style. I think we're done. I mean, I should double check that the receiver works. My aux modes are all as I expect them to be. I think, I think we're done. I think the only thing to do now is take it out for a test flight and start testing some of these new beta flight options. As a reminder, I am putting these videos in a playlist specifically about beta flight 4.5. My overview of what's in beta flight 4.5, this video and the future videos I'm about to make testing each of the new features and going into the details on them. That playlist is linked in the video description below as well. There is a card on screen where you can check that out. I'll see you in the next one. I can't, I gotta, I'm gonna go outside and fly this thing.